Good morning. <laughs> Matcha morning. Matcha morning. And is it morning? Uh, well, for us it's morning. And uh, is your hair properly messed? My hair is a disaster. Where's my fucking hairdresser? What we do when we get in the morning is we just kind of do this. Yeah. Just, just move the dreads around. Yes. But you're gonna pour oh. that matcha all over yourself. Let's do the Cheers. clink. <laughs> it's a good day. I've been laughing all day, day yesterday yes. and today. Like I started laughing. <clears throat> Oh my god, <clears throat> finding finding these funny uh, music mixes yes. online, and I shared a couple <sighs> yesterday with the uh, close friends, and then one I actually put on my Facebook page, but I knew a I lot know. of people would, they might view it, but they wouldn't comment because less somebody... <laughs> <laughs> oh, were, it was worth commenting. Oh, but it was so fucking hilarious. Oh my god, we were peeing ourselves laughing. Well, and it, as I mentioned to you, it's good because it's not offensive to anyone. Because well, it, it wasn't doesn't to me. It doesn't specifically choose a side. Mm -hmm. I mean I mean there's it's not like it has to be accurate either. It but, it wasn't entirely <clears throat> accurate. No. It said it's uh worse than SARS, which it isn't actually. Yeah. It's actually less than, Way less. than SARS. Um, less. But it, it was really good. I thought it was extremely creative. I found it. No. Man, Put my, my flag cool. on it. No. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm a vital oh, if we no could only vibe. have it in the background without getting charged or oh whatever. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Mm. See, I'm a touching my face. <laughs> um, yes, it's very, very good. I'll post it as well. Just to, I was, I was posting it and my phone went really weird and it started like things were spinning and I had to force quit my phone. You were freaking out the AI. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it was. It was really weird. Um... So uh, we were going to talk a little bit about something, but we haven't got the info for that, so that will be tomorrow. Well, then we could talk about what it was going to yeah, be about. Like I'm waiting for a link thing. from our mortgage broker. She's an amazing, amazing mortgage broker, Maria. And not an average amazing mortgage broker, no. but I mean the best yeah. amazing mortgage broker. Yeah, I consider her one of... Angel incarnate on earth. She is one of those people. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Soon to be covered in tattoos. <laughs> yes, indeed. And she was talking to me about um, how the rules have changed uh, among the, the big banks, the uh, credit unions now, and certainly lenders in terms of shared purchases of, a, of property that are non-related so in other words like a house in order to get qualify for a mortgage if it's a shared purchase typically in the past it had to be among family members proven family members well that doesn't apply anymore and our house is fucking amazing for community living it would just be i mean it's just so big if people who've been up here they know it's like it is a massive house yes. Yeah, and what we're going to do, we're going to do our spring cleaning coming up over the next few days, mm -hmm. and we're going to do a walking tour of the house. We're going to show all the different rooms and mm -hmm. and uh, and also the the property outside. It's got so much potential here for the right group of people, and ideally, I would say people with the same dietary values. Like in other words. Uh, if they're vegetarians, they should all be vegetarians living in the space. But, if it, uh, no, I do feel that. Well, or if they're vegan. My they question should, is though, you yeah. could be a vegetarian but have different ideals, or is it better to have people with the same idea? Well, it, you ideally, know, yes. Definitely, it, it, food it is work. a biggie yes. because it's a shared kitchen. Mm -hmm. So ha me spending a lot of time in the mm -hmm. kitchen, I know this, and I've, you know, I also prepare food for our clients, or have prepared for food for our clients in the past. And I'm very uh, mindful of their mm -hmm. dietary preferences. You know, that's really important. But I do think for something like community living, whether it's three people or six people, I mean, we have six bedrooms in this house. Uh, it is possible. And they're large bedrooms. People. I mean, it is yeah. possible. But anyway, that's not what we're suggesting. No. 
but nevertheless, if it's people all sharing the same dietary preference, or even if they do rotations, for example, cooking rotations, they're all eating and cooking the same kind of food. Mm -hmm. And I think that does make a difference. Well, and the great thing as well is there are um, five of the bedrooms are big enough to be bachelor apartments, so to speak. So it gives plenty of room for someone to go off to their private room and have lots of space. I mean, they can have their, their office in their room, no problem to have that privacy. So their room could, you know, if people are, I figure a lot of people that working from home thing makes it very doable. Yeah. And they've got the ability to have their office in their bedroom without using up a lot of space. Well, and they can spend a lot of time in their room without going insane. So yeah, I that privacy agree. is amazing. But actually, I do believe that if someone were <clears throat> interested enough, the Robin room and all the rooms are marked by a different stained glass on the door that has a different bird. So that's one way to know which room is which. But the Robin room and the room next to it, which is, I think, was it the... Uh, Isn't it a stork or some kind of thing? I don't think it... No, I think it was a dove, which There's I dove, use yeah. I use as my uh, craniosacral therapy air, uh, office. That wall could be taken out, and then you've got another big bedroom with that closet. Like, yes. it's actually... It would. So that would make it, like, six full-on bedrooms, like, big... Yeah. Well, some people's apartments aren't as big as some of the bedrooms in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, that's, um, but we'd like to talk more about that because we think it would be a fantastic idea. And now that people are more interested in getting the fuck away from the city. You swore. I always fucking swear. Oh. At getting away from 5G. I have an automatic censorship thing and it just kind of leaps it out and puts an <laughs> overword and says fuddle that <laughs> I give no fucks. <laughs> but also another um, selling factor to attract people is we will be living next a door. Short skip down the uh, yeah the, the lane yeah. So uh, in the sense of getting used to the house, we're always there to ask yeah questions. But also we're just really cool neighbors, and I think um, we like really cool neighbors. Yeah, well, we. Um, I mean, in my ideal mm -hmm. world, this would go to this house would be purchased by an artist community. Let's say, for example, with a similar or a same uh, food lifestyle, whether it's vegetarian, vegan, for example, and. Um, so and we could be eat. the meat eating version down the road. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but there's things that you need to know about living out here, this mm -hmm. area. We we have early winters and late springs, which is fine if you orient around that. You know how to work around Although that. We've had a, if you were doing your art throughout the winter, we had an early spring. We mm -hmm. did have an early spring. It's still going. We get the odd snowstorm in between, which is a fucking plus. Because then you don't get the black flies. Because otherwise... Not the same way. Anyway. Not the same way. Mm -hmm. Because usually black flies come end of May, beginning of June. But mm -hmm. this year we had an early spring. So April we had some really gorgeous days that we typically didn't see until May. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, oh fuck, are the black flies going to come in, in May? But no, we had a couple of snow squalls. And this kept the fuckers away. So yay! My favorite months here for me personally are spring. Yes. Which I've never yes. used to like spring because I always considered it wet and soggy. Out <sighs> here, it's a different story. Yeah. And autumn. Autumn, I absolutely, and I'm talking from mid August right into the first snowfall, whenever that happens. And typically, it happens either in November or December. So it's, um, if you work around that, you have some mm -hmm. amazing, amazing uh, raw materials to work with here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're guaranteed clean air. Yep. Clean Impeccably water. Impeccably clean, clean water. water. Amazing water uh, to drink and ending. bathe in. I mean, yep. wash your hair in. Yeah, there's no fluoride. No. No chlorine. No chlorine. You know, like that's that's something when uh, things get a bit stressful and you think, wow, I actually have this amazing water source that people come here with jugs to get. Um, lack of sound, noise, noise pollution. Yep. Uh, wonderful wilderness. Yeah. Uh, forest at the back. Um, although there's a section of the forest that we're selling to our neighbor, 
Uh, once you were to get to know that neighbor, hypothetically, you most likely will be allowed to stroll around on that as well, but you certainly are able to stroll around on our 60 acres. You have, uh, you would have 20, exactly? 20 acres, 20 yeah. acres of your own, <clears throat> which is a lot to walk around on, but you would also be able to walk around on our trails yep. in the forest. Uh, so it's a win-win. Really, Should, all we the also have. There's also a barn that we built, a beautiful barn with electrical, with yeah, plumbing. with plumbing, electrical, mm -hmm. um, and also <laughs> five acres that are of pastures that are fenced in. Yeah, um, and you don't have to use it as a barn. It could be a, a workshop. It could be a yoga studio. It could be a, a meeting place for events. Yeah. Um, it could be, like, well, I think it probably it, would it be really, a multi-purpose place. Yeah, it depends on the on the, the vision of it the It could people. be renovated to yeah. be, uh, you know, insulated and stuff. Now, the thing is, of course, the more you have it for certain purposes, you got to know you have to plow in winter. So, otherwise, if you're not using it for animals or, or for other purposes in the winter, then you don't have to plow down there, and that saves you... A lot of hassle. Well, Otherwise, it's just although, plowing out front. Although you can't, we got away without plowing this last winter, trying it out, uh, and and just uh, shoveling or using a little snowblower for a foot trail to the barn. If you don't want a vehicle to be able to drive up to the barn, which in which case you'd have to plow. But even still, our cost uh, now. Sometimes it changes each year, but generally speaking, our cost has been about $70, $75, and that would include, like, per plowing, and that's basically our whole driveway here, plus a lane going down a hill and over to the barn. Yes. And going the other direction to where our teepee is. So that's a lot of plowing, and it still was, you know, under $80 for a plow. I think... Um, don't quote me, but I think if you weren't needing to do all that plowing and you had someone do it, it's probably going to be like 50, maybe even not that. Uh, anyway, less. it's hard to say. It wasn't that <laughs> but many not times for well, the whole winter. With all our plowing, it was $500 bill yeah. for the whole winter. <laughs> so it's like, oh whatever, my God. that was okay. And the other thing we want to do um, is also give our impressions of some of the people that we've met out here. Some of them have been amazing people with uh, great talent, creativity, and integrity. But we also met some of the ones that didn't have that. And we'll talk about them too. So it becomes like a heads up, which we didn't have. We had to go through the experience to learn who to trust and who to fucking stay mm -hmm. away from. But now we can turn around and say, well, you know what? We had dealings with this company and this is our review of them. Yes. <laughs> But I'll tell you, the, the good people out here, and it's mostly mm -hmm. um, that, uh, it's not a matter of good, it, but then there are the best of yeah. the good. Mm -hmm. And those people are absolutely amazing. You yep. cannot find people of this caliber yep. anywhere. Like, good souls. Just phenomenal. And they're, they're, they're quietly doing what they're doing. They don't need the limelight. You know, they're just... Doing the thing, I remember finding our barn builder, Sean Kelly. Well, fine. finding him through people recommending, and uh, mm -hmm. actually, it was Sonia. It was Sonia. Sonia and Andy, who yep. mentioned it because he had done work in their store. Mm -hmm. And when we met him, we're just like, and we had met a lot of great barn builders at the time, interviewed, and and I felt really good about all of them. They, you know, seemed like really good, honest people, but Sean Kelly, above all, all else, he was just unique in in all good ways. He was, we just said, no, he, he has to build our barn. And through our experience with that, he even helped shear our sheep. That was well, intense. Well, like he held them down in the black fly season <laughs> and I sheared. Um, so I would say he's also brave <laughs> mm -hmm. and wonderful. Um, along with his wife, Celine, and his three boys. Beautiful boys. Who he's homeschooled yeah. and oh my gosh, Tim. You can't yell while we're doing a video. Yeah. That, that was Tim, just so you know. The house nerd. Yes. And um Tim, Tim I'm on fucking We just said video. you can't yell while we're doing our video. Oh, I didn't know you were doing a video. Well, you better say hi now. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't tap anything on your phone. <laughs> 
Don't tap anything on I'm the phone. I'm trying to log in to fix. Okay. Okay. Tim is our computer guy, so <laughs> he's trying to make things work that aren't working. That's that why we up. can't make work. Yeah, that's why he's up here doing work at a very fashionable social distance, as you can tell by us yelling. Well, we got 6,000 this, this, uh, 6, square feet. You, you, could have a, uh, you could have a protest in here and they'd still be social distancing. This is how big this place is. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, and, and just to bounce back about the house, uh, from living here for almost five years, this house is, is a big house. It's yeah. uh, over 6,000 square feet. The basement is phenomenal. And this is just my take on things. Solid. Now, these are things we didn't know when we bought it, but we found out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely solid house. Even though it's that big and open concept, so, you know, high ceilings and things, it is very economical to heat. And I'll go into that a little bit more detail. Um, it's heated by wood. Mm -hmm. uh, it is yeah. also has electrical heating if you chose, but you know, we've never we don't. used it. Uh, and it also has a uh, oil backup, which we also don't use. But it, just knowing it's there is an option. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's phenomenally insulated. Uh, we have heated the place for a whole winter on a thousand dollars worth of wood that then we have to cut ourselves or hire someone to cut. Now that's a thousand dollars is a tandem load, which is one of the, this truck with two little, that's the tandem part, two little trailer things on it. Um, and there are plenty of people around that will cut your wood if you don't want to do it yourself. And that's very, very economical. And um, like, if you think about a six, over 6,000 square foot house on a hill with no trees directly at it. So there's some wind as well. And a, and a quite a winter. The idea of a thousand dollars spent, if you choose, a thousand dollars spent plus some hard work, you could heat your house. Now, uh, anyone that's been in a big house, even half this size, knows that you do not keep a giant house uh, all super hot, you know, with not a single little draft or anything. Generally speaking, uh, people that, well, even people without big houses out here, quite often will keep it at a fashionably comfortable level of slightly cool with their fireplace going and so that area is where it's super hot and you just bask in the heat and then you walk around with uh, quite a, well we have with a, a loose sweater or something on. You just um, learn to wear learn. slippers and bathrobes and you know yeah. if you need your pullovers whatever. Yeah. Or pay more. And, and keep it hotter. Yeah, I mean, know. personally, I, I would like it warmer sometimes. Yeah. Damon's used to, I mean, he likes the bedroom really, mm -hmm. really cold uh, yeah, at night. To sleep well. To sleep. And now I've gotten accustomed to that. So when I go visit my parents, oh. and my mom has the fucking house cranked to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, I, I can't even breathe in there. She, so, she has the fire on in the summer. <laughs> she has the fireplace going in the summer. So she's... But that's her level of yep. comfort, right? But for me, I can't. I can't stand that. But personally, depending on the winter, how early it starts, how late it runs, how intense it is in, uh, in terms of cold and snow, I would say, you know, anywhere from 1000 to 2000 dollars worth of wood. And that's yeah. costly using it in the boiler in the basement as well as the fireplace but it does you know it takes work to mm -hmm. have to you know go down and load oh, out more but it, wood and in my opinion it's fun work it's the smell of the wood gives you exercise uh the beauty of the fire crackling yeah the sound it, and we never spent any time upstairs where we are right mm -hmm. now because there was nobody up here and the only yeah. time we we would crank it and get the the uh, boiler going is if we had guests coming up Yes. Which was rare because most people didn't want to come mm -hmm. up. So. But yeah, so very economical home to own and run just for us. So if there were a small group of people, even two families, I'll say, uh, that cuts the expenses in half. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very, very doable. The basement is so big that if people wanted to, I mean, a lot of people might be doing their home office and doing stuff online. But if there are people who are considering doing some kind of workshop type of uh, situation where they're making things, 
yeah. um, crafts or, or otherwise, yeah. uh, there's enough room down there that if you wanted to, you could, um, <laughs> you, you could have uh, 10 employees down there sitting at desks, working on something. I mean, hypothetically, yeah. and with loads of room, like it's, it's that big down there and for a basement, quite high ceilings. Um, it's unfinished, but uh, it, it's very, very nice, very comfortable. And in the winter time, because the wood fire boilers down there, it actually is quite warm. Yes. As well. Yeah, in the winter it is. And in the summer, it's quite cool. Mm -hmm. So very nice as well. It's got a back uh, double door metal security doors for loading and unloading and walking in and out without having to go up and down stairs. Uh, I can drive my UTV in there. So it's a, like the potential for, for running a business of any kind. Uh, you know, business from home. from home yeah. is amazing. Yeah, it's there's amazing. lots of space, um, lots of room. If you, uh, for growing food, I will say that we do have a outdoor, uh, what do you call it, when it's an irrigation area. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. We have which we've never really used, bothered. which we've never used. It's just one of those things, but I just got too lazy to it, a computer, you know, it's got the little computer thing and you set it up and you can set all the little stations to do different things at different times and when to go on and off and stuff. And then you just close it down in the winter. And I just got, um, well, I remember still, it was a few years ago and I went to set it up my first, my second summer and I went to activate everything. And, um, at the moment there were too many black flies around for me to focus on reading this book because it's not my forte. Uh, little computers and things programming them and uh, I just gave up I, and I never went back to set it up and we were fine like nothing went you know whatever we've but never it's been there. successful growing <clears throat> much out here let's put it that but way. that's not here that's but us. That, that is that's partly us because I have a purple 99% partly us yes and him as an artist I've seen him figure out yep. the most incredible things but in terms of mechanical electrical no so the other, th so I was going to suggest our neighbors down the road have had this greenhouse. It's not even a super expensive one. It's one of those uh, kind of semi whatever green, but they've had it for years and it's never blown away in the winds <clears throat> out here, but you would need to have a greenhouse because mm -hmm. of the winds out here. Which they're a blessing. The winds are a blessing. I'll tell you why in the winter they're a bitch sometimes. But in the summer, they're great because they cool everything down and blow the bugs, away. Blow the bugs away. So we rarely had problems with bugs up at the house. Uh, sometimes on in the outdoor uh, deck, which is covered, um, you sometimes get them around dinner time, black mm -hmm. flies or mosquitoes or whatever. But when the winds were out, they, you know, they'd be down in the forest or down in the pastures yeah. or whatever. But I have to say, I have seen on that balcony, which we'll do in the tour, um, some of the most spectacular thunderstorms out here. Oh yeah, and sunsets, sunsets sunrises. And not sunrises so much, they're well, out front. They're, but here. But yes, but sunsets out back. Mm -hmm. And uh, one time, it was amazing, and I was standing outside, but not in the middle of it. I stood under the this uh, covered deck, but still outdoors. Uh, a tornado, an actual tornado came right through the back section. We had a slack line stretched out and it literally like vibrated right through the slack line. It melted. Like, <laughs> like the it vibrations were amazing. so intense and so high frequency that they melted. Yeah. So you can really get in touch with the elements out here. It's pretty spectacular. Yep, you saw moose. Two moose this yeah. spring. I just uh, videotaped uh, I sw at least 15. I thought there were closer to 20 uh, wild turkeys walking through the yard. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, when they're up close, uh, they look like little dino well, dinosaurs. They're, they're quite big. You know, if you see them out of the corner of your eye, you think you're seeing a, a pack of wolves or something. You know, like you see these large objects in your peripheral and then you're like, oh, they're wild turkeys. Holy yeah. mackerel. Remember that one thing oh. we saw? Like we've tried to post when we had our Urban Primitive Lifestyle fake book page, which we haven't been posting much lately. But uh, remember that one, it was like something in the distance and it was colored in this light. Sometimes we get, you can see the Northern Lights, but this was something else. Mm. Do you remember that? That torch thing? Yeah. Oh, there was a name for it. People had, the, um, messaged and said, 
that's called a such and such. So it is a phenomenon yeah. and happens not that often, but there's a name for it. But it looked like someone had just turned on a propane torch and it was like a flame yeah. shooting up, and but it was caused by the sun somehow setting. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Long. Yeah, we were really. just we were blown. Gobstopped. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you wow. the night skies. If you're if you're a stargazer, if you have a telescope, oh my god! If you're a lily, if you're a lily, stargazer lily, ah, that's oh. stupid. It, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I just thought out loud that looks kind of like a Tourette's. Yeah. So there's some pretty spectacular things that mm -hmm. uh, ways of being with Mother Nature out here that you're just not going to get in a city setting. You just aren't. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you get all the uh, the relaxation and um, therapeutic aspects, let's say, of uh, when stressful things happen, they tend to be less stressful out here for all the reasons we've mentioned and others. It's just I think part of the reason it was so be. hard on you and I is that it was just well, you and I. Well, it was us, and we took for ourselves. We financially just pushed ourselves to such a maximum that we needed to keep the same income flow happening that we had in Fergus mm -hmm. and it didn't happen and we were yeah, able to weather it for a while yeah, but because we didn't have enough hands to, in this house yeah. to be able to do the things that we had to hire other yes. people to do so that's why it got really ridiculous to it not really sustainable for us yeah. at all but we still love it out here and now even more so with the whole 5G and Fucking city shit. I just, ugh. Just even being in the city is. Yeah, the only Uber you get out of here is Uber Nature. <laughs> Uber Mama. Uber. Yeah. And Mother Uber Nature Mama. is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. She can be ruthless too. And you get to see all sides of her. Yes. And there's yeah. so many lakes out here. Uh -huh. You can go canoeing and swimming. Fishing too. Galore, fishing. And if you're a hunter, you I mean, I'm not saying, obviously, some people would be like, me. Fine, but uh, lots you can get do some hunting out here, and, and it's at least it's a great fallback knowing that you could if you had to, which is how I look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't hunted ever, mm -hmm. uh, but knowing that I have our sixty acres, if something ever really got uh, quite tense and I had to, I know I can, you know, and that's phenomenal. Also. If I had to or wanted to, uh, well, I can have my chickens, I can have sheep if I wanted, I can have goats if I wanted, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, if someone came here who wanted uh, a horse, they can, they can have their horse here. Mm -hmm. um, it can be done. I might want to just kind of customize one of the stable areas for like a paddock. Yeah. For their horse, but um, it's very doable and there's lots of area to ride yeah. around. The in. advantage of having animals on the farm, whether you eat them or not, or whether... Um, or they eat you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Another threat. Or moment. if you, let's say, have uh, mm -hmm. for, for fiber, right? Sheep. I mean, mm -hmm. you got so much land for them to graze on, which is great. It keeps everything nice. But if, let's say, you didn't cull them, but you had them for fiber... And you could potentially even have a little mini fiber mill. I mean, it really depends on what the vision would be of the person. Yeah. But uh, people need to realize when it comes to animals, because we had them, you know, animals get sick, animals die, mm -hmm. animals fight, animals injure each other. It's, it's a really... Not all the time. This is but just, it is these are the things that can Things happen. that can and do happen. Yeah. And it yep. can be extremely stressful. And you betcha, if it's going to happen, it's going to be on the worst fucking ice storm, freezing cold day or night. And you're going to have to deal. Yeah. That's kind of how it was. That was 2017, 2018 for us. And I'm so glad it's like done, over. Oh the only God. thing we have now are three goats that we have borrowed from our friend Don Don. And... Uh, and they're there mostly for the dogs, to give the dogs something to do and focus on and so on. But and once we, yeah. and guard, yeah. But once we move, uh, shift over to our dream, which is to renovate the, the other 
shed building and uh, we'll have our dogs down there. We probably will only just keep the chickens and not deal. I don't know what we have. We'll just see. Or but, maybe but have goats, right? We can. we can do all that <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I just like knowing that I can do a lot of things if I choose. Whereas when we were looking at moving closer to the city, we were having to deal with the very real probability that the, the amount of limits on what we had already become accustomed to were going to be placed on us. Like we most likely would have had to bring our dogs in at night, which I just, I it may not have worked. It may not have worked. They're I mean, outdoor they will dogs. Stay in They're at used at to times, dogs. They get restless. They do. They want to be outdoors. That's and what they love. That's when they want to be out a lot of the time. But um, yeah, there were too many limitations. The freedom out here is amazing. It's phenomenal. And uh, I think you don't really realize how much freedom you have until you're out here as well. Mm -hmm. And now with the whole um, quarantine situation, lockdown, <coughs> excuse me, um, a lot of people are uh, reassessing what they value most and reconsidering what options they have and there are many many people not just here in Ontario but everywhere that are moving out of the city um, so it's gonna be interesting just to see uh, what effect that has mm -hmm. um, in the near future a lot of people as well who have cottages are winterizing them and moving into them yep uh, that's another thing or at least just increasing the time they're at the cottage so there's a lot of stuff going on yeah and between that this whole situation plus aeropon opening up the foundry oh. down the road uh this as a cannabis spa and uh, there's going to be jobs coming into the area so there's more options than are currently available now but ideally for people who are already working from home who want to do some other sustainable living I mean, this place could be just a little mini Findhorn. I keep thinking oh of it. It would gosh. be so amazing, possibly down the road. But yeah. anyway, that's in my world. That's we want good dream. neighbors. That's why yeah. we're going out of our way like this. Because <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd rather have good neighbors yeah. myself and also our good neighbors that we have. I would rather hand them a situation where they're going to have good neighbors yeah. rather than just luck of the draw. Yeah, uh, and art like is our preferably. Neighbors. Wouldn't it be fucking amazing to have this art yeah. community right here, mm -hmm. but with other interests, you know? And then hopefully that builds. You know, yeah. more people come in the area, and the area becomes even more interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, the right select people. Yeah, uh, it's just uh, and maybe exciting. Somebody can do like a K Mud radio station. One of the things we loved oh. when we went to Humboldt, California, uh, is. Uh, it was a whole community built around cannabis when cannabis was still illegal well, in California. Well, okay. Kind of, sort of, and, and more. Okay. Because uh, from what I was told, that area started to get populated, and it's hard to say what came first. Probably cannabis was somewhat there, but I think it was everywhere to some degree. But the way people were telling me is that uh, it became densely, densely, it became, it's an out of the way area, so it's not really densely populated, but a, a, a mass of interesting variety of artistic people because they were all the artists, poets, uh, musicians that said, fuck LA, mm -hmm. this is so corrupt and fucked up, we don't want any part of it anymore. So they, all these free thinkers all went out to Humboldt and then said, hey friends, come on out. You know, this is a cool place. So you got this community radio station that everyone takes part in. Mm -hmm. uh, you got all the cool things that you would think of that exist in a city. Um, and so like, I remember talking to the guy at the garbage dump and he was a poet and a philosopher, <laughs> you know, um, musicians busking everywhere. And then like Raven mentioned, the cannabis situation. And squatters um, too. Squatters. It was just a fascinating area. And uh, their radio station was called KMUD, uh, hence KMUD, and uh, we loved it. And why can't that happen somewhere in Ontario? Why isn't, you know, it is possible. And maybe this whole situation has happened. One of the good uh, aspects of this uh, shift 
is in the positive sense is that people will start to uh, in moving out of the city who are most likely hovering on it anyways um, it'll open things up for those in the city that don't want to be as crowded so they won't be as crowded maybe and it opens up for the people that are moving out that wanted to anyways and finally just get off their ass and say okay I'm doing it uh, and it's also great for us because we'll have some interesting people moving in that are that might you know that we know and and we can mm -hmm. do cool things mm -hmm. um, not that we don't have already a whole bunch of really cool people uh, as we were talking about up here but uh, I can handle you know a, a handful more that would be very cool um, so we're only at 35 minutes that's, yeah, that's pretty good that's pretty good because yeah. at 38 is is camera tends to so weird. cut off the video it, it doesn't cut it off luckily it turns it into a second video yeah the second half yeah and I got a little app to uh, stitch it together and Tim's trying to figure out right now uh, how or why this silly app says that I can't stitch my latest uh, or my last and latest video together the two parts because it says that I don't have enough room on my card mm -hmm. uh, but yet my card is empty now yeah. and it still says it so we're trying so, to figure that out so pay attention those who uh, have a boner for fucking getting neurally threaded or chipped or whatever yeah you'll be going into a whole <laughs> new kind of doctor you'll office. need your own personal Tim to yeah. fucking <laughs> you'll have this kind of computer doctor <laughs> and they'll have to you know hook yeah, you up to the internet and you know to the mainframe or whatever the procedure will be and uh, force quit you and upload your intelligence mm. if you uh, had any or you lose it <laughs> new brings new meaning to the term i just lost it man i i like your it, expression of uh, becoming um uh, what was it called the uh bourgeoisie the bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie. become one of the borg yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it's like Nouveau Riche, but only mm -hmm. Nouveau Borg. Yeah. Or maybe not so Nouveau Borg. Yeah, we'll see what unfolds in the next year or so. Be interesting. But I'm excited. Raven's excited. I think a lot of you guys are excited. Uh, that's not to be insensitive to all the, the hardship that's come from all this, but one must look at the positive aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, and quite often, um, difficult times push us to figure out new ways and that brings on a whole new renaissance mm -hmm. um, you know we'll have a new romantic period sure why not you know? and spiraling back Dream to built. Maria where we started yes. with all of this Marie. Maria has clients who uh, have run a corporation created a corporation um, I'm waiting for the link still hasn't come yet mm -hmm. But this uh, corporation both educates and assists people who are interested in shared purchasing of, of property and how that works. So as soon as I have that link, I'm going to post it. And uh, yeah, and also Maria's information as well. We'll actually put it, we'll put Maria's information in uh, the comments below mm -hmm. this video, right? Good idea. Um, the comments that is on Facebook. And, uh, we'll take it from there. Mm -hmm. So wrap up. Shall we call it quits? Let's say it just say? fucking. It's just. I think it just. I think it shifted. So the yeah. second half we won't even bother. We so we won't be saying goodbye. So this is kind of a waste of time saying goodbye. But let's just do it in the video. Oh, anyway, stitch it together. Or we'll stitch it together. Who knows? Uh, but folks, till tomorrow or the next day we do this thing. You're going to be getting yesterday's, or the day before yesterday's one I did on my own, and you'll be getting this one mm -hmm. fairly close together, so that'll keep you busy. Yeah, and let us know if you're even interested in this, because otherwise, uh, I mean, we may do it for ourselves anyway, just to, about doing the tour of the house and... Uh, you know, well, it'll it'll be there yeah. for, any, maybe do it as a, just a separate one that people can check out if you're interested, here's yeah. the tour yeah. of the house. And that's that. Mm -hmm. um, and soon, uh, when I get a bit more clear enough to do, we can do a tour of the trail that we mm -hmm. somewhat cleared. Oh yeah, we will. We may be setting up some work stay weekends coming up. Weekends, weekdays, whatever. Who, 
don't think it matters at this point in everybody's mm -hmm. home. But uh, for those who are interested and want to have a little break away from the city, uh, probably towards the end of the month. Yeah, or we're, we're trading a wonderful chance to get out into nature, hang out with people once this whole situation mm -hmm. is over, get your dose of uh, community hangouts around a campfire type of thing and walking through wilderness in ex and some good food mm -hmm. uh, in exchange for um, a handful of hours work. Uh, very, very comfortable work, mostly outdoors, mm -hmm. uh, just getting fresh air and helping yeah. us clear up our trails. And something. just note that right now there is a total fire ban in yes. Hastings Highlands. So we can't promise the campfire, That's but true. we can pro promise the fireplace if necessary yes. for yes. the fire, if we can't do a campfire. But it's all good and mm -hmm. it's all exciting. And uh, I just feel very, very optimistic about everything. Yeah. I think a lot of clarity is going to come, well, let's just say within the next, before 2021. Mm -hmm. In the rest of this year, I think we're going to see a lot of positive um, answers and new information and possibilities and mm -hmm. so on so ciao for now ciao for now do, 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 do.